Jesus and those who want to be. That's how I See, I'm one of those that don't want to be. I don't think I never pull for LSU. I wouldn't pull for LSU if that wasn't UVA wise. I know we would win, but I wouldn't pull for them. The Nile is not just a river in Egypt, though. Hmm? The Nile is not just a river in Egypt. <laughs> no, it's going to be a river, a river down the, your way. <laughs> but, uh, now, nah, any more? Let me make a comment. Well, we can do that. People might be interested. Coach Sam Dixon, he came up, what, 55 men? Yeah, he lived in 59. Yeah. But anyway, he coached about everything too. And Randy played for him and I did. But he never talked about his wartime experience. And his son told me he saw that movie, Saving Private Ryan. And he started opening up about his military career. And you can go on YouTube and they did oral history with him. Yeah. I I've watched seen it. I, yeah, I've watched it a long time ago. Very, it's very interesting. It talks about his experience during World War II. And uh, I don't know, I mean, medals he won. Do you know Randy? No. He won several uh, medals for his bravery. Well, and, I, and also, getting back to the sports part of it, Jay, with him. Yeah. He coached. He, when he left from here, that both you and Randy can mm -hmm. help me on this. Yeah. He would coach, coach at other places. He coached tennis. He coached football, basketball, baseball, and Tiggly Winks if they had it. Mm -hmm. But he was an active participant in tennis up until his 90s, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. Well, he he built, built way he, up there, yeah. He built his own tennis court and did lessons at his home. I think when he lived in uh, Fred McMurdo. So the man was well versed in. Everything he done, yeah. more so than I. <clears throat> I'm not well versed in anything except running my mind, <laughs> and I had plenty of practice for that because of her. <laughs> but the story on Sam too, when he came out of the military, he was injured right before he got, and he rehabbed it. Fort Story, Virginia, and he came home what, near the end of the season when he was injured. He got home on Wednesday and quarterbacked. I think on yeah. Friday night. Yeah. Told, he was drunk by Burton. But he came home and was home, like Randy said, on Wednesday, and they played with the quarterback on Friday night of that snack week. This is Sam Wilson. Sam, oh, Dixon. Sam, Dixon. Sam Dixon. Sam Dixon. Sam Dixon. He coached at East Stone, then he went to Appalachia, and he went to Northern Virginia from there, then he went to Maryland. Not Dickinson, just Dixon. D-I-X-O-N, yeah. D-I-X-O-N. Oh, D-I-X-O-N. Okay. One of his teams, I noticed in your book there, I think they went six and three, and then they had to end up fourth in those six wins because of an eligible player. Mm -hmm. You know anything about that story? Right there's the main 1955. Mm -hmm. yeah, two guys in there. Two guys in there. Yeah. And according to us people from Appalachia, virtual Stallard's the one uncovered <laughs> about midway through the season. Yeah. That, don't, that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Now, that was his first year in Appalachia. And, and then those two and L's the part. Knowing Sam, he probably got somebody else to fill out there. What you feel to eat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, there were two boys in there. That that was Owen Castle's life here, and Big Stone being third to nothing here. Olin, but Olin was hurt. But uh, that, mm -hmm. I won't call the name. One of them was a running back. The other was an offensive lineman. I won't call the names. But uh, the reason I ask, I grew up in Derby. That's why. I was. I was a bulldog long before I was a back yeah. back here, so well, yeah, and, 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 I, and I watched the Clinton boys. So they were from Dunbar and Stonehenge, the two and the players. But I would recommend right. this book if you haven't bought it. It's yeah, it's book. good. It's good. Yeah, I've read. There's it. two reliable sources, and the Jim Galloway, the boy from I just finished the boy from Crackers Neck yeah. yesterday. That's a good book. Too. I've read one page of it. To me, it's the most important page. Gives the page about five. Why were they ineligible? Why were they ineligible? Too old. <laughs> they were too old. Oh, too old. old. Another tidbit about Sam Dixon. When he was coaching at, I believe, George Washington, and, and remember the Titans. Yeah, it, was, it was the summer before the Olympics. And I went up to visit him during my Christmas time. Olin Castle was living with him and training and working out there. At that school where Sam was in. 
And he's the only guy I know of in my skin that's like won a gold medal in the Olympics. There might be somebody else, but he's the only one that I, I know of. Yeah, he also and he's, he's still living. He's, he's written books and trying to get us to sell them. <laughs> and then, uh, I don't know how many he's got left, but he had a lot of books printed. See, I do, my, I do mind the reasonable way. You order them, then I get them printed. And that way I'm not stuck with it. Right. Mm -hmm. See, Randy, even sometimes, even I can do something that's reasonable. Not often. <laughs> See, I told you I can pick on myself, too. But, um, no. I'm mean, telling what I paid you for my book. Yeah, he paid for two books, really. He paid me for his when I, before I ever got them. Then he ended up giving his to somebody who? Watts. Watts. Yeah. Watts. Then he, he sends Wayne down here with $25 for another book. <laughs> you sold it yet? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> He's supposed to sell it and order another one. Oh, okay. You're getting your money, so don't worry about it. Well, see, if he orders, if he, if he sells his, yeah, I'll have to talk about that. Though. If he sells his, then he'll need another one. Yeah, okay. We'll get you on the best sellers list yet. <laughs> well, uh, as far as I'm concerned, on the sports part, I am. Okay. On the best sellers list, <laughs> locally anyway. Yeah. Because of all the books I've done, I've never seen anybody even attempt from around here to do any book, other book. <laughs> How long have you been doing this research on all this football guys? Oh, that's easy. Tell, tell us a story. Well, that's Why do you see at the library all the time doing something? Um, probably mostly nothing. <laughs> uh, like I said, you know who created this monster? Because back in 19, I think it was 93, 92 or 93, there was talk that Powell Valley was going to go double A. Well, if they'd gone double A, we wouldn't have the way I had it figured, which we know how my figuring goes, we wouldn't be playing Gate City, we wouldn't be playing Clintwood, Appalachian, Norton, or none of them. And I, I made the comments, I need to get these scores against these teams that we played since 1959. And I asked Garner, I said, what do I look? He said, well, for the first 30 years, you don't have to. I said, why? He said, I got them. He said, you type them in your computer, bring my copy back to me. I said, okay. I only had to look up two years. So I've been doing the research on sports since 1993, which marks 30 years. And when the last football game is played in high school this year, I retired once from garbage. Mm -hmm. I'm retiring from sports. Because <laughs> I figured it's time for somebody else to take it and run with it. I've done enough books, I've done enough research that I'm 65 years old, soon to be 66. It's time for somebody from LSU to do something. <laughs> you got plenty of time to write another book. I'm not doing any more books. <laughs> Just find another topic. <laughs> oh, I got plenty of topics, but I ain't doing them. <laughs> I could do, I could do, a, and Dennis knows this, I could do a book on Dickinson County, I could do a book on Russell County, Scott County, Lee County, mm -hmm. but I figure if they want it done, then you got somebody from Dickinson County, you got somebody from Scott County, and all they can do it. <clears throat> like a few years ago, I ran mm -hmm. into a confrontation with somebody from your all's hometown was mad at me because I was doing Facebook pages on Big Stone Gap Buccaneers and Powell Valley Vikings. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, you ought to, if you're doing those, you ought to do one on Appalachia. All the time, I said, where'd you go to school at? He said, Appalachia. I said, you do it. <laughs> so, I mean, I was doing it just because of the fact I like doing it. Right. But there comes a time when it gets old. Yeah. I mean, you know that. Yeah. That was a time when you were young. Yeah. You got up. <laughs> There's a time I was young. I'm getting older. Mm -hmm. But, uh, no, I mean, I might do things occasionally for myself. Yeah. Occasionally. But as for doing it full speed ahead like I've done for the last 30 years, no. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know how you remember dates like I, you do. That's, to it, me, that's what like uh, when it first scores, came, scores and fifties in the nineteen fifties and sixties. How oh, you that, remember? That's easy. It's on my computer. <laughs> you're you're doing it from memory though. No, yeah. this I am. Yeah, yeah. But now I looked at it enough that I can look like okay, like 1923, for example. Big Stone wins the state, I mean state, wins the county championship. Okay. And then somebody said, well, how do you know that? I said, well, first of all, you got to know where to look. Second of all, you got to take the time to look. <clears throat> and that's what I've done for the last 30 years. Somebody give me an idea on something, I'll go and look. See if I can find something. It's like when I was working for the town. Somebody asked me about something. I said, I don't have it with me, but I think he got it at home. I said, if I don't, I can find it. If I can't find it, I said, I can't lie about it. And one of the guys down at work said, and who's going to check to see if he's right? <laughs> I think you've been taking lessons on memory though from Randy. No. Because he can remember dates too. I started to do this before I knew Randy. Because I... Truthfully, I didn't really get to know Randy until he started down here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I knew of him. Yeah. I knew of you because of fact you used to be my next door neighbor. <laughs> I try not to tell too many people that. <laughs> Let me ask you a question about 55. Uh, yeah, you looked it up so I can't hide it. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm looking at the record, Brownie's record in 55, but it's, uh, I thought there might have been a three-way time in 55. Between East Stone and, and uh, what year, Randy? Fifty-five. Brownie was at, uh, that's when that sound had come to Appalachia. Well, there was a three-way tie there. If it was East Stone, Norton, and uh, no, that's, what I, that's what I thought. No, yeah. if it's nineteen fifty-five, yeah. it would have been J.J. Kelly and Clint Wood. And East Stone. Okay, but East Stone was involved in it. Yeah. That, that's what I thought. The forfeits got them in, I think. Huh? The forfeit game well, got them in. Well, East Stone only lost one game that year. They were well, like they six one. one six one and one of course. Yeah. They were that, the Brown Brown that's when that's when Brownie Cummins was there. Right. He'd, he'd he'd replace Sam. Mm -hmm. He replaced Sam and then Sam went to Appalachia and decided to use too many eligible players. And the rest is history. Donnie, before they started the playoff system, how did they determine who the state championship was? What was it a school that I mean, were you up against everybody? The yeah, smaller schools and the biggest schools. Well, what it was, it's based on the Associated Press and the newspapers, and this okay. area has okay. learned have that <laughs> enough newspapers to battle with Blacksburg and Charlottesville and. And then when they started playing us in playoffs, they knew why they didn't count us. But, uh, you know, yeah, like, you, like you got permission. You can you're, 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 talk, you're talking about the, you know, Appalachia won the regional, regional, and but there was no games after that, right? Right. The Big Stone, when they won it in 53. Well, sometimes there would be, sometimes that would be a state playoff. Game. And I'm glad you brought that up because it reminds me of something. Go back. I know, how many times have I ended this thing? <laughs> Not enough. Not enough? 1929, and it took the Virginia High School League, which is another thing I don't like, 40 years to determine this. 1929, Clifton Forge, <coughs> no, not Clifton Forge, R.B. Worthy, which was sophomore. Big Stone Gap played in the regional playoff game. They battled to a tie. So they used the old-fashioned method to see who was going to play in the state championship game. They get a coin out of their pocket, flip it, Big Stone. Well, then they played Washington and Lee for the state championship down here. And uh, another tie. And then the Virginia High School League actually came to the conclusion, which I thought they were never capable of thinking, that let's just give them all state championship trophies, all three of them. 
And then 40 years later, they decided after 1969, hey, let's start a green ground, let's start playoffs. Took them 40 years. There's another form of government, which we all know how I feel about government. They don't know how to work, and they ain't break. If it ain't broke, break it. In the years that Norton won those state championships in basketball, were they classified then? Or were they playing everybody? They were, well, I, I would think there's some kind of classification. It had to be them. Yeah. You know, the, the, but, like I said, but Radford is, is who, who beat them in 49. Right. Right. And also, everybody says Union slash Pow Valley's home game were played at Bullet Park. Technically, yes. Actually, no. One, they don't have a home field. They travel from the school up to here, so they always went away. Well, 1934, and I don't want to end it on this one, unless somebody has something to say. <laughs> In 1934, John Fox Jr.'s brother design, had designed the football field. Well, he passes away before it's completed. They named the stadium, you notice I said stadium, not Bullet Park. They named the stadium after him, which is now really known as Fox Stadium. <clears throat> I got into arguments galore on Facebook, and thanks to Mark, I made sure he goes. He, I knew he had the papers. I said, do you have the paper when it tells about that? He said, yeah. I said, send it to me on Messenger so I can prove these people wrong when they say something. Well, some people argue with me that was never called that. Greg Wade, see now, he said, Donnie's starting up something. But he knew that I knew, and because he, he knew, because Cecil Maddox had told him. And people were telling Greg, he's going to feel like an idiot when they <clears throat> prove him wrong. He said, Greg said, they won't prove him wrong. Because Cecil told us that same story. Hey, how, how, how you doing? That is when I printed on Facebook the articles that Mark had sent me. I said, okay, you non believers, here's the proof that you need it. And to the and because when it all started when I posted the schedule, because on the schedule they usually put by um for the lack of a well, let's use the real team. Union at Lehigh, which, you know, that meant you're playing away. And then if you're playing at home, they list the name of the school you're playing, but they wouldn't have to. So I started doing this for that one year. Here's Lehigh has been her stadium. Okay. Union Fox Stadium. And Every school that we played that year, I put the, I didn't put where it was, I put the name of the stadium that we played at. That's what got the argument started with me that it was never known as Fox Stadium. What was the first name? It was, first name was actually the park. Who? The park. Because, see, it didn't become Bullet Park until 1934. I didn't know that he had the third river. I remember Horace, He's Horace Fox. Yeah, he, now he was the one that designed it. Morris mm -hmm. uh, always got his hair cut up at the OK Barber Shop on Appalachia. Mm -hmm. I've seen him up there all, a lot. He always wore a straw boater. Yeah, I certainly have heard of him. I bet that was a sight to see. <laughs> but back then, that was Stan's. I'm sure about what they're doing. It is, that's 20 years out of date, but well, it didn't bother me. Well, like Morris is a great big. <clears throat> Rotund man. He was an engineer for uh, Virginia Coal and Iron. It's like me, I've been out of date for years. I just don't know much. Well, it's Bullet Park, but is it still known? I mean, is the real name still Fox State? Yeah, but they never, never I don't know why. I'm, here's, my, here's what I'd like to see, but they won't do it because it takes money. Right there, as you go in, into the football field area, they got those. I said, why don't they put an art way up there? It's just Fox Stadium. Yeah, Bullet Park. 
But it had a wooden sign. Yeah, they had a wooden sign, but no, even Garnet don't re Garnet didn't remember that sign. Um, I, at one point, I found one that disappeared. It was in the fifties. It was there at some point in the fifties. A bullet, bullet park sign. No, H.E. Fox, H -E Fox Stadium. Oh, is that right? It was uh, Horace Fox or Horatio Fox. H.E. Yeah. Fox Stadium. I think there still should be something. Well, I got a running argument going with town hall about there's nothing down here that recognizes Car uh, Rex Carnes. It's Carnes Gym. It was Carnes Middle School, but there's no acknowledgement of anything. That said, of course they got that what you said Carnes Park. What good's that? Nobody goes there. There's nothing there. It's a parking lot. Now, down at the field house there, those all those games have been played at Bullet Park. Was those all state championship games? Yeah. The only team that lost them was Clintwood, right? Yeah. <coughs> Controversial, but yeah. You know, they lost by yeah. one point. I think what it ran. Yeah, I see you, sir. Yeah, 23 to 22. Yeah. They went to two and Pash interference, that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. Which seems to be the norm anymore, whether it be high school, college, pros, or typically with football or whatever. Donnie, I've got a question for you. I figured you would. The photo that we came across in here at the game of Big Stone playing at uh, South Boston. What's the story on that? What year? What's going on there? That was, uh, that was, I don't remember the year, but. South Boston, I think, was the only team to score on Big Stone that year. Okay. And Big Stone got beat 25 to nothing. That was, they went like 10-1 that year, Big Stone did. And that was classified as a state championship game, I think. Okay. But I can't remember the year. Uh, it was, was it, it was pretty early, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It might have been 1939, where they had that, you know, the half, they had was half state champions. I think you looked it up for because of the photo. Well, we've got that picture in the 39. Yeah. yeah. We've got so one. a couple of them, I think. But, uh, in the reunion. Yeah. I, I think, it, I, I want to say 1939, but I think it was in the 30s. So I was wondering if that was considered a state title. Yeah. yeah. I remember when I first seen that score, I said, why in the world are we going to Boston? <laughs> I didn't know that was South Boston, Virginia, <clears throat> then. The Bill Casino up there right now, <laughs> in that town. You mean they still have a town? <laughs> it's on the, not on the North Carolina border almost. Yeah. My cousin lives there. Of course, that means if you sneeze, you cross the border. Yeah. I think we should have a wall or But, um, no, that's all I got to say. So What's far. Is that real good? Yeah. Awesome. Right. <laughs> I do the best I can with what I have. I don't have not much up here, but I use it. I didn't know you were such a comedian. <laughs> oh, I've always been that. That's more. That's Randy. That's my sister. Give him a for that. No, I want to get a book. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good seeing y'all. All right. 
Well, me and Kaiser started playing fiddle. It's been a little over two years ago. He called me up, I was down in Florida, and he said, uh, I think I want to play the fiddle. I said, well, I think I have extra fiddle. So I made it over here to Kingsport. I'm going to see my sister who's over there in uh, uh, assisted living, and, and I took him a fiddle over there, and I showed him how to hold the bow and and how to how to, how to do a shuffle. So I taught him how to play fiddle. That's all there is to it, folks. So if anybody else out there wants a lesson, you, know, <laughs> you tell them where you took it from there, Mr. Kyle. But after I taught you that 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 shuffle bow, what did you, who, who taught you how to fiddle? Matt Trainum of Floyd County, Virginia. He got me started. Really got me going on the fiddle, actually. And I learned a lot of tunes from the great Uncle Charlie Osborne from him. Because uh, he taught me a great, great little part. And uh, he's, a, he's a really great guy. And I actually lived 15 minutes from him. So I go over and learn some tunes from him. And uh, once, I, once I got more comfortable with going, I started looking into more uh, of tunes. I found this uh, version of Bonaparte's Parts Retreat from Bruce Green. He got it from a fiddler who uh, lived up in the Smoky Mountains. It's a, it's a very rare, very beautiful haunting tune. And I certainly hope you all enjoy this.